It seems like everyone thinks the Grand Priest is evil. But what's his plan? I'm not wrong in saying that, right? Something about this tournament feels off. As in, we're going to get a twist at the end or in the middle of it. Similar to the way the 25th Tenkaichi Budokai played out. For those who don't remember, that's the one that was interrupted by the threat of Babidi and Boo. So, this shows that Toriyama's not against interrupting tournaments for the sake of villains being introduced. Also, we have the presumed case of Jiren, who most people believe is the mortal stated to be stronger than the god of destruction that is stronger than Beerus. A lot of people have assumed that because of this, Goku will finally surpass Beerus. However, episode 95 of Dragon Ball Super shows us that Frieza is relative to Goku, in that very stiff but gorgeous punching scene. I believe it's hard to argue that they're equals, because I believe Goku is stronger, but they are definitely relative. So Super Saiyan Blue Goku is relative in power to Golden Frieza, this Golden Frieza had to struggle to remove the Hakai from his body, which I'd suspect that Super Saiyan Blue Goku would also struggle to do, even if we say that Goku is 10 times stronger than that due to Kaioken, then we have a Goku who would most likely not struggle, but he's still not on the level of Beerus. Beerus blew that attack away like it was nothing. Goku at 10 times Super Saiyan Blue would most likely still require effort to remove that attack. It's not going to be fodderized by him like it was by Beerus. So why is it important to know this? Simply put, it's foreshadowing. Remember, we have been told Beerus is weaker than Belmod, the god of destruction of Universe 11, who is weaker than the mortal Jiren. All of this is still part of the theory, as it isn't confirmed that Jiren is the mortal we spoke of, but due to what we see of him in episodes 96 and 97, and his prevalence in the intro, most people, including myself, assume this to be true. So what does this actually mean? Well, it's not that Goku has to surpass the wall of Beerus, but also the wall of Belmod and Jiren, all at the same time. That time being when the biggest of the three walls is falling on his face. But what does this have to do with the Grand Priest's plan? Everything. Toriyama and Toei are establishing that there is no way that Goku and Universe 7 can win this tournament. They want us to feel the tension of there being no way for Universe 7 to survive as we watch all of the fighters slowly taken out during the tournament. The Grand Priest hatching a diabolical plan is the perfect way for Universe 7 to be spared because of all the universes having to come together to stop him. So, now we have a reason, from a storytelling perspective, to have an evil plan interrupt the tournament. But what is the plan? For this, I have to ask two questions. One, why is the Grand Priest the servant of the Omni King? And two, is the Omni King the top of the God Hierarchy? Both of these questions are not easy to answer. The first one has been weird to me because of the Dragon Ball Super manga. In the anime, we are told that the Grand Priest is among the top five strongest beings in the universe, but in the manga, Whis believes his father is the strongest being in all of the universes. To me, the Grand Priest being the strongest makes sense, because of how I believe the second question is answered. Zeno is the top of the multiverse in the same way that Beerus is the top of Universe 7. They are only the top because their angel does as they say. Whis is stronger than Beerus, but calls him Sama, the Japanese equivalent of Lord, much in the way, I believe, Zeno is the god of destruction of the multiverse, and the Grand Priest is his angel. Have we ever seen Zeno do any creation? No, only destruction. Do you think Zeno came up with the grading system for the universes himself? Of course not. He's a child that needs an iPad to keep track of 80 people. How does anyone believe he graded 12 entire universes by himself? The Grand Priest is pulling the strings in the background to eliminate the universes he deems unworthy, or possibly the universes that he believes are a threat to his plan. As we said, angels do not fight outside of training and are dormant when they don't have a god of destruction in their universe. So, 
the Grand Priest has to formulate a way for the angels to be liberated from their servitude without fighting. Since Zeno is very childlike, he's easily manipulated, and this is how six of the originally 18 universes were destroyed. Pure manipulation. After the Universe 6 tournament, Zeno became very interested in watching battles. This is why Zeno wants a tournament between eight of the universes. The Grand Priest has been pulling the strings in the background, so that Zeno wouldn't eliminate the bad universes. Instead, Zeno is eliminating the strong universes. Universes that, when fighting together, could pose a threat to him. A teamwork theme that is prevalent throughout the tournament. As I was writing this video, episode 98 came out, and it gave me the final clue to piece together what's going on. Notice that when Universe 9 is destroyed, their angel, Mojito, is smiling. But that's not the proof. Everyone is focused on Mojito smiling, when really, they should be wondering something else. Why is Mojito not in stasis? He no longer has a god of destruction to attend to, so why is he not in stasis? The answer is that he has no universe. The reason Whis was in stasis in the future Trunks timeline is because he had a universe, but Beerus was dead. So, while a new god of destruction was being quote-unquote found, he was in stasis. Side note, if my theory is true, then Zamas helped complete the Grand Priest's plan for him by failing at his own. Back on track though, if an angel has no universe, then they have nothing to wait for, and they are freed from servitude. Freed from stasis. Since Mojito didn't go into stasis, I believe that not having a universe would also negate the limitation on fighting. If this is true, the Grand Priest can amass an army of angels. That's why Mojito is smiling. And this is the Grand Priest's ultimate plan. He has released seven of his children so far, and he has eleven more to go. The tournament was against his interests, as it spares one of the universes, but he does get to wipe out seven more universes and completely point the finger at Goku, who he thanks for proposing the tournament. For those wondering why the Grand Priest didn't suggest the tournament sooner, there are three reasons I can think of. One, he didn't want the blame to be put all on himself. Two, he wasn't there when Zeno proposed it after the Universe 6 tournament. And three... It would be easier to destroy the universes in the background with the explanation of mortal levels afterwards. With not an ounce of blame being placed on himself and an army of his children, an army of angels, the Grand Priest could wipe out most anything in his path, including the five remaining universes and possibly the Zenos themselves. And if not, he could reveal the Grand Supreme Kai, the creator of the multiverse, and kill one of the Zenos by killing that Kai. The final liberation. Destroying the Omni Kings would liberate the Grand Priest, allowing him and his children to create a multiverse where they are supreme. No longer servants bound by the chains of the God Hierarchy, now freed angels ready to forge a new existence from the ashes of the one they destroyed. Wow. You guys have no idea how excited I was when that Mojito scene happened in episode 98. The pieces just slammed together for me. But what do you guys think? Leave your opinions and counterpoints in the comments down below. And subscribe if you want more Dragon Ball videos. But for now, video outro!